Okay, uh, I will give you a quick view if you have not met me before. Uh, audience view. There we go. Uh, uh, oh, I don't know. I don't see me on the webcam. Uh, webcam. I don't know. Okay. Anyways. Um, oh. <laughs> okay. Thanks. People can see you. Okay. You've hidden webcams, but you're still sharing. Okay. That was a quick picture of me, a brief history. I graduated from Mohawk College in civil engineering in 1977. I did engineering for almost 15 years in transportation, municipal engineering, uh, legal surveying, uh, construction surveying. And in the uh, mid 80s, I started using AutoCAD. And um, uh, by 1989, we had developed some software for civil engineers with an engineering company I was working with. And they decided to get out of the software development business. And from there, um, I took over the business. And for the last 30 years, I've been self-isolating in my own office and uh, developing software for civil engineers that use Autodesk products. Okay. Um, I'm going to go through some of the things that we've got. We do have pull downs as well, um, but you're only allowed so many pull downs. So now everything, all new tools go into the ribbon. Some of the um, legacy products go into the, or stay in the pull downs. So we have sites, which is geared to uh, grading and earthworks. Um, we have roads, uh, profiles, alignments, cross sections, uh, road uh, drafting. Uh, piping tools, anything to do with uh, gravity networks, and we even have some pressure network tools. Uh, under survey, we have uh, anything, it's a bit of a misnomer. This is anything to do with feature lines, uh, some survey drafting, uh, this many different tools for points. Uh, we even have some mapping tools. And uh, for uh, stakeout, we have some tools that will go to um, an AUF file for construction staking. We also have a number of labeling routines. So I've taken uh, the labeling routines out of these and put it into one a ribbon, uh, similar to feature lines. There's different ways of working with feature lines. And then under admin, and under admin, we have how to set up um, if you're on a network version, you can set it up from here. Hang on, I better make sure, no questions. Um, if we're working with relationships, we can show that here. Uh, here's some uh, legacy toolbars that some people have been using and have been gotten used to. Um, if you need to know about the date of your software, you select the About button. And it will tell you the last time we did some compiles. And this one will show that on um, a couple of days ago, we updated our DLL. That's, the, uh, that's what takes um, the, the bulk of our programming, but we have a lot of uh, starting tools in here. Um, you can download and update your software anytime from here if you have that admin stuff. Uh, under help, uh, there's a number of things uh, in here. We have tutorials for uh, all the tools, for river tools, uh, row tools, site tools, uh, the manuals. There's links to videos in here. Um, but under uh, tips and setting precision, you can set the precision for your elevation. It shows you how you can control how many uh, decimal places we put on our um, stations, elevations, and um, slopes. And even on some, we put it uh, the um, number of decimal places for earthwork quantities. Uh, we also have settings. And here's where we have a lot of our settings set up. Uh, load on startup. 
Uh, load reactors, I've said it to two. Um, we've been having some issues. If you have a large project with points, then I would recommend setting it to one. But with two, uh, they will fire and um, it's kind of neat. Uh, a LAN desktop, I have even some clients still using AutoCAD or LAN desktop. And here's a toggle whether you want to use AC points or if you still want to use the old soft desk point blocks. Um, uh, and boreholes, um, some values in there we can use. Um, I'm going to change this to granular because I uh, we're going to go. So we're going to save it to our local folder. Uh, the first time you have it, uh, you can see an option to save it locally or globally. Uh, it reads a file out of your Civil Essentials folder. Uh, finally, uh, if you want to see a lot of my videos, uh, just do a Google search on Robert Steltman. There's me again. Uh, and here's all of our videos. Okay, I'm gonna get rid of that. And now we're gonna go into the demo. So I'm gonna start off and we're going to create multiple profiles. In Civil 3D, well in this one, I have three streets. We're gonna select all the streets. We're gonna query the original ground surface. These are the styles that are in the current drawing and we're gonna go okay. And there's our three streets okay hey now once you have your profiles uh, i'm going to just delete these because I, there we go i'm going to start doing my design shoot um all of my routines begin with an undo mark i didn't want to do that i didn't want to delete that other profile Okay, so all the routines begin with an undo mark. So that uh, undo, if you type that in, that brings you back one. Uh, undo from the ribbon will bring you back to the beginning of that route, the last routine you ran with me. So we're gonna do some design now. And we pick our profile view. There's some defaults we're gonna add. And we're gonna say we wanna start it and we wanna match there or we can select the main street and it will calculate the station and elevation but we'll start on this one and as i move my cursor around it displays station elevation and grade of my tangent so i'm going to just eyeball it close and we're going to put in an exact station and in an exact grade and we go okay and then we can do the next one and maybe we want 6% and okay. And then we're gonna enter an O and we're gonna go to the end of that point and okay, enter to finish. And here's our K for the first one, K for the second one. And this will be a design profile. Okay, now, we need to match at that intersection. And if you're using civil, uh, you can do it in civil 3D with an intersection command. What we're going to do is we're going to use the draw tangents again. And we pick our profile view. And OK. And I want to find out the intersection point of road one. So station 176 on road one equals station zero on road two. Um, here the elevations match, and there we've just matched. I'll just pick a point up here, and okay. Enter to date, be done. That'll be a design profile, and okay. Now, should our design change, and I'll change the, we're gonna go intersect by grade on a profile. We pick our profile, we pick a point, prior to the PI we want to adjust. And maybe we want to go down 2% and up at five. And we go, okay. No, I did that wrong. I 
I should have gone minus two and up at five. Okay, and now here's where it's uh, showing the, uh, we're gonna just, here it tells us what a uh, curve length in K, so maybe we wanna change it to 11K. Oh, new curve length is gonna be 75. And we can, that will be the new low point. And we'll accept that. And there's our new profile. But what happens on row two, if we go under and we go update, and you can see that it's been adjusted. Now, if we want to put a cross fall in, back to road, we go profile to profile relationship. We pick our road one, pick our road two profile that we want to update. And we want to go to the end of here, which would be station 176 on road one. And we want to have a four and a half meter road widening and we want minus 2% grade. And what that's done is it's added that PI. So both of those points now will follow the road center line uh, profile of road one. Okay. Hang on, I just have to make. Okay. So now we're gonna do some boreholes. So if you're doing road reconstruction, you'll have some boreholes along the center line. So under site, many areas, we're going to put a borehole in plan and we're gonna query our original ground and we're gonna put a borehole right here. And here's our granular, uh, you can change that. And maybe to that granular level, we wanna go 0 0.5. And we go, okay. So it's in there. I've uh, exploded the other, or made the other ones bigger. But now we want to create a profile from that. So we go profile tools, create profile from boreholes. So we're gonna offset our original ground. And we're going to plot the prof. So we're going to put that on. And now we just pick our profile. And you can see the boreholes get plotted on. And we're going to tell it we want to query the attribute that's in our block, the granular. And we're gonna plot it on the profile view. So there's our new profile uh, based on our boreholes. And it's also created a, um, a 3D polyline on our center line. What I've done is offset that polyline and create a surface called road one. And now what we end from there, I've also added it to my cross sections as a static. Uh, if we go under alignment, center line. We've added road one as static as opposed to dynamic, which allows us to edit it. And so should you decide that, hey, there should be, I don't like the way that surface was created from the profile, there should be some dips in there. So we're gonna just modify this one. And under row tools, create surface from section edits, we say road one and road one surface. And we're gonna create a surface called mod. 
or modified. And that one we want as contours. And we want it to rebuild automatic. And you can see that the uh, we've what we've done is we've taken those uh, section edits and put them into plan and built a surface from that. So now I'm going to take that same section edit and we're going to go over here and we're going to modify. We'll just add in one or two more points. Okay. And now you can see that it's been rebuilt and it's added in those extra points. Okay. I'm going to delete that surface now. One of the questions someone was asking me is we have our pipes in our cross sections, but we uh, can't get the inverts labeled on them. So if we go under cross sections and we go label pipes and section views, we say road one, comes up with the list of all the cross sections you have. I'm gonna just select all and we go okay. And it's labeled each one of our cross sections at the invert of the pipe. Okay, road tools. I'm just gonna undo that. That takes all those labels off. And I'm gonna go under, We want to have, I'm gonna put some points on our cross sections and our profiles. So we're gonna go place points on, place points on. Okay, we're gonna put points on our center line. Uh, we pick our profile view. Starting at station zero, 331. And it will put a point on each cross section view. At that, we're just um, putting a cocoa point in plan. We're also putting that cocoa point on each cross section. And we're going to put it on our profile as well. And there's those points again. And next, I want to go under view, and I want to put in three three viewports. Okay, so we want to look at cross section at station one hundred, and and there you can see the point. And then if we go in plan. At station 100, we can see that point. And if we go under road cross section and we pick move entity in section, we pick our section view and we pick our object to move and you can see that it gets highlighted. And we maybe wanna move it to here uh, currently, the elevation is 181.876. We move it down here and it gets updated in both. We can also do it um, I don't see it in the profile.
Okay, because um, these are AutoCAD entities and not part of the profile. They don't get associated with the profile. And oh, there's that. There's the point that we were looking for. Okay. So we can do the similar thing in our profile. We're going to move block. And we want to move a block. And we pick a profile view. And then we pick our entity. And we can move it up. And there's that. OK, so this is how you can control, looking at three different things, control how you want your Kogel points to look. OK, um, we're going to now go back to view, a single view. And if you're doing, let's say you want to have um, draw of ditches or something like that along your uh, on your profile and on your, you can pick the points in your cross section and you want to see them on your profile. You go into road and you pick, draw 3D P lines. Oh. So it's going to draw a 3D polyline in plan and also place it on our profile. You go road one. And we're just going to pick a point uh, where we think it should be. Uh, we'll start over here. We'll keep it a little bit lower and maybe to the right of the pipe and a little lower than the pipe, maybe a lot lower than the pipe. Um, and we're going to plot it on our profile. Pick our profile view and OK. So this is what we've picked. It will highlight it in on our plan as well. And uh, there's an option in Row Tools to create a profile from that. We can create an alignment or a profile. So we're just going to create a profile. So we select our feature line. Oh. And we're not going to create alignment. We're going to say associate it with road one and here becomes our civil 3d alignment our profile so if we go under pipe tools uh note road tools maybe you have a pipeline or something this one is pretty dramatic uh, we're going to create 3d stationing on that and we pick that profile and it's called road one. And we're gonna put five station equations on. So that takes a, a little while. And what it's going to do is the stationing will reflect the length of that profile as opposed to the horizontal stationing. So I'm just going to escape out of here. And if we go under uh, road one properties, you can see that here's the stationing. And we have it going. Um, it gives us an extra length. And it also will put on our stationing. So right now we've got about a meter longer than it was before. Um, we'll undo that. Okay, so um, let's say you have a curb line and you need to offset it and uh, stake it out under survey. We have layout tools. Polyline feature line offset. Uh, we're going to go 20 meter, every 20 meters, uh, offset it to the right 10, uh, and we're going to ignore our vertices because there's way too many on that polyline. We go OK, and it will create this AUF file. We're going to just put, uh, we'll put uh, points on. We're going to overwrite the file, and we go OK. 
and we select our polyline and it's put in all these points and that we can now upload to our data collector. We can add other points if we want other points along there uh, for maybe uh, fire hydrants or uh, an, a driveway or something and we go enter. Okay, so now it's what it's done is uh, created this file with the point number Northing Easting Elevation. Okay, any questions so far? All right, so that's that file. What I've got here is a corridor with a number of streets on it. And if we go into road, we're going to label the elevation of the corridor feature lines. We're, we've created a surface from that corridor. We're going to put surface labels on. We're going to query the finished ground surface. And we're going to put it on every 20 meters. And we pick our corridor. Now there's a number of baselines in here. We're only going to work on the one, but you could pick as many as you wanted. And we're going to go from the edge of the travelway to the crown. And we're going to put a crossfall slope label on it. And it's going to be percent. And it asks us when to start. We'll say start at station 3000 and go to 3400. And you can see here that uh, we've got our surface slope or surface elevations and our crossfall put on our 20 meter interval. Another one to do is if you have cross sections and you've got them sorted like this, we're going to place them in. Well, first we're going to trim the section view offsets. So we're going to, um, because there's a lot of empty space on there outside the last slope stake. Um, I think on left is the right is zero. No, zero, and this one's 30. So there is no slope stake for some reason on the right side of this one so we're going to label that one at 30. the left one if we set it to zero it will uh, go six meters past the last uh, slope stake and round up to five um, and we're going to trim to the design uh, surface and so we go okay and we say these ones here and you can see that we've made them quite a bit smaller. And now I'm going to rearrange them in columns. We're going to put it into two columns. We pick the point for the first column and we just pick one section view and it'll find all the section views in that group and rearrange them. Okay, so now it'll be easier to plot them out. All right. A lot less wasted space. You can control how much. So on the left side, it went up six meters and then up to the nearest five. Okay. Now, uh, stormwater management's getting to be a big issue. So they want to know the capacity, uh, how much water will be stored in the roadway. And... Um, 
where it's the spill elevation. So we're going to go under site, many areas, road ponding. So we're going to pick the profile. We're going to pick uh, the structure and we're going to place a label. And so we're going to pick our corridor surface. We pick our design profile and it'll create a file that we don't care about. And then we pick our structure. Ah, no, we're not. We select our structure. Oh, you know what it is? I have my, it already been labeled. And we go, okay. And it prompts us and said, is this the spill elevation? And we're gonna go say no. And now we can see the outline of the uh, pond. And we'll say yes to keep that contour. And it'll ask us for the next structure. And here's, uh, no, we don't care about the file. Here's the label. Here's the elevation, volume, and depth. All right, cool. So some of the municipalities have been requesting specific reports. Um, one of the local municipalities is Durham Region. And so what I've done is I've written, uh, they have three reports that they want. I'm going to do the subgrade report. We pick our corridor and type R1. And so it has four points that it needs to have. Um, point A. L, left SG, oh, left subgrade, okay. And null for that one. And point C is the right subgrade. And okay for that one. And it's going to open up a spreadsheet and fill in all the columns for us. So we could have had additional points put in there. And so to manually do this would have been a, quite an exercise. So there's our whole corridor exported out. And uh, we can do that the same for the pavement. Just pick the corridor. And we're going to pick a uh, left edge of pavement and right edge of pavement. And we go open. And there's some options in there. And if report gets filled in. Okay, cool. Any questions? I don't see any questions. Okay, no chat. Nope, no chats, no questions. Okay. Oh, nope, that's not what I want. Yes, it is, this one. So some uh, DOTs, um, so here we have a, in our model space, we have all these points and they want to have all of these points 
labeled either in the model space or in the paper space. So if we go before, here's our uh, models, the paper space with our viewport. If we go under road uh, alignment tools, station A CC points in paper space, and we're going to say no to the model space, and we're going to put it on both sides and place along yes, and we select a point inside the viewport, and scale is 0.1. And it will also make sure that there's no overlapping text. So we'll make sure there's at least 0.035 between the... Okay, so you can see that it's putting it on. So I'm gonna just stop the routine and this is what it'll look like afterwards. So it gives you the station, the offset and whatever was in the descriptor. And there were a lot of points in this one. Okay, a real time saver. Okay, we won't save that. And in this example, the here's the the main center line of the road they're doing reconstruction for, and they want to show all the utilities that cross uh, another utility. So. Um, Sorry, even I have to do that sometimes by intersection utilities. Okay, so this is just gets us some defaults and we select our alignment, which would PBR6. So this is public utilities uh, gas and we've created an alignment for that and we go okay. And we say, I want to add it to this profile view. And what it's done is it's found um, some pipes that have crossed that alignment. Uh, you can, what this routine does is verify that uh, we've got them all. And we go enter. And it's added on all the pipes that have uh, we highlighted into onto our profile. So um, they've given all of our, the pipes, um, it's taken the, um, well, look under pipe networks and networks, and here's all of the different uh, pipe networks they made from the utilities. Okay, I think that's pretty well all the things that I wanted to show you out of the road tools was, um, are there any questions? Oh, Matt wants to know if my tools work in 2021 yet. Um, we will have them working probably in about two weeks. We haven't tested them, but it's not a big deal. It will happen soon. Um, any other questions? Okay. 